There were some standout performers from week three in the LCS. You know, it's our favorite little segment of the honors and reports. You got to report someone after every game to get your anger out. And of course, you got to honor for uh, some, of the, some of the fat loots that you can get after a game. So let's start with the happiness. Let's start with the honorable teammates from week three starting in NA. And it's one of those old teams from the NALCS. It's TSM's Hauntzer in the top lane. I mentioned him earlier. Two games on Gangplank, 13 KDA. More than a third of the team's kills, or pretty much a third of the team's kills, and 659 damage a minute. Uh, he was dominant on that gangplank, just constantly drawing pressure in both that Echo Fox and that FlyQuest game. There was two three-man dives against him, three-man ganks, just adding so much pressure. And in some of these team fights, he was still two-shotting people. And, I mean, you're just seeing the the high praise, the high priority teams are putting on this gangplank. He's been featured quite a bit early on in these early LCS weeks. Uh, even with that nerf to Klepto, didn't really affect gangplank that much. And uh, it's obviously a champion that Hauntzer can play super well. And he showcased that in week three. Um, and I think he's a guy who sometimes people think are a little bit overrated uh, on TSM and has been because he's just an NA guy uh, who's... You know, he talks a lot of smack, but, I mean, he puts up most of the time. He's been a top three top laner for the last couple of years uh, on TSM. And, you know, he was one of the key shining moments uh, for TSM this week. There, there were a lot of good moments, but I think Hauntzer's the guy I'm picking to stand out on this team. He's the guy that I'm honoring at the end of the game uh, at, for a 2 week for TSM. Expect a lot more solid play out of Hauntzer. And, obviously... He yeah, put so much damage because he was playing that gangplank twice. But uh, he's, he's got a wide champion pool, and um, I'm sure we'll see him dip into it later on in this LCS season. Let's jump to EU. EU, honorable player of the week. We got to give it to an entire team because they performed so well. That is G2 Esports. You just couldn't pick one guy to honor on this squad, so you got to give all five of them a little bit of an honor so that you get some bonus stuff after that. These numbers are actually insane. Obviously, G2 went 2-0 this week. Uh, looked a lot better than they did in weeks 1 and 2. A 22.6 KDA for the entire team. That's across all five members over two games. They only died three times as a team in those two games now. Yes, they were very low kill, low scoring games uh, in those matchups against H2K and... Oh, who else did they play? We're going to get back to that. Uh, they only had three deaths, though. So that's absolutely absurd to go through two games. And 22 to 6 in turrets is also absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so Perks gets to be in the photo shoot because he's such a photogenic, handsome looking guy. But uh, this is really a, an award for the entire G2 lineup. A bunch of guys didn't have any deaths. Uh, throughout this week and Yankos was landing his smites and he had some perfectly choreographed and timed smites with the likes of Perks and Yankos but uh, this week there were a lot of moments where it looked like uh, G2 was going to lose a lot of members but they just got away by the skin of their teeth escaping a lot of these fights and they just seemed a lot more coordinated as a team uh, I mean Wonder and Perks I think performed well to above average, I'd say, in the first couple of weeks. But it looked like Ra uh, Hyarnan and Wadid looked a lot better this week. Hyarnan was a guy who struggled, and Wadid, you see there, the fast fingers. Captain Jack McHale's moves there to keep Hyarnan alive. But that bottom lane looked a lot better in week three. And, ov and overall, G2, Kings of Europe, not ready to redub them that title yet, but they definitely showed a lot of positive signs in week three and put up some absolutely ridiculous numbers so g2 tsm clg they're all climbing backwards uh, or climbing forwards up can't climb forwards they're climbing up you know you know what i'm talking about uh we'll see what skt can do in week four for all these former champs of the respective regions because after this performance skt looks like the weakest of the tsm g2 trio uh it wouldn't be an lcs week without some reportable players it's always fun to look at the honorable guys who look great, but it's even more fun to look at the players and teams who struggled mightily coming in to week three. Uh, let's start with NA again, and we've got the man who subbed in the jungle for FlyQuest, 
Are we talking about shrimp? Uh, I mean, first off, Onda had some up and down performances during the first couple of weeks, but shrimp comes in here and there was no up or down. It was just down. KDA of 0.6, anytime you're below that old one, you know, it's pretty brutal. His XP difference at 15, minus 940, which is the worst in the league so far. And uh, that damage percentage was the worst among all junglers. 8.1, that is pretty bad. Um, FlyQuest? <sighs> not really sure what to think of this team yet, but I mean, I'm not sure why they were subbing out Onda so quickly. I mean, they were 2-2 two and two with him. Yeah, some of the performances, basically on any champion outside of Zach, he wasn't looking too fantastic. But I mean, he's a young guy. He's a young talent. You gotta, you gotta let him find his footing a little bit. I think it was a little early to uh, sub him out. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. There might be more reasons as to why they did this. But I mean, Shrimp, a veteran guy who already had that synergy with Keen uh, coming into this with their time on Dignitas, looked rough in this game and uh i mean this 2v2 here against liquid was pretty much just the end of the game like <laughs> they got completely stomped by liquid and this 2v2 was one of the turning points he just looked shrimp just looked lost he was he was invading when he shouldn't have been invading didn't have enough vision and he just get collapsed on here uh as you can see he eventually gets first blooded in this clip as well so i mean the early game from shrimp wasn't good at all the mid game wasn't great and the late game wasn't that great. He was just, he looked lost at times. He was kind of indecisive when to go in, when to go out. And a lot of it just ended with him walking back and forth and then walking too far forward and dying. Not really contributing a whole lot. That's why his damage numbers were so low because a lot of the time he's hanging out on the outside of the fights. Uh, o2 week for FlyQuest. Not a great performance from Shrimp. We'll see who's hanging out in the jungle for FlyQuest going forward into next week. Uh, EU, who's going to get reported? Usually this is just our staple moment to shout out someone from the Unicorns of Love. But this week, it's not a member of UOL. We're looking at Rockat's memento in the jungle. And Rockat had a tough week. They were one of the many teams tied at 3-1, and one, uh, top of the standings, heading into week three. But uh, Rockat and memento in particular had a rough week. 0.8 KDA again. Sub one, not great. Uh, minus 353 experience at 15. Not as bad as shrimp. Almost a third as bad as shrimp, but in the negatives, it's gonna be bad. And the damage per minute, 177, pretty bad. Again, he played Sejuani one of these games, so the damage numbers aren't that big a deal. But uh, the main uh, sticking point for me for Memento this week was that play against Giants on the Camille where he Tries to jump into the Trist, uh, not the Trist, the Jinx, steal back playing the Jinx, and he gets hit by the Flame Chompers. That was the turning point in that game, the reason they lost that game. And then against um, Fnatic, Rockat just got absolutely clobbered. He had the 0 6 0 the Dream scoreline. This is that Camille clip I was talking about. Oh, right onto the Flame Chompers. Then he gets hooked. Wombo Combo doesn't do anything, but. If you just avoid the Chompers, you could kill the Jinx, maybe win that fight, maybe win that game. Uh, yeah, in these other games, he was doing his best shrimp cosplay, just kind of running around, looked a little lost. And I mean, that Fnatic loss is not on Memento fully by any means. The whole Rockat team looked out of sorts in that one. But uh, you got to pick someone to report in that post-game lobby, and I'm picking Memento in week three and he looked he looked really solid through the first two weeks but i think there's a lot of pressure on this guy to perform on that rock at lineup because he's got to be the main playmaker uh on that squad and when he's not delivering the team looks not so great and that's what happened to them in week three make sure to like comment and subscribe for more esports content